the former Romney campaign policy director, uh, Lani Chi, and we've also got uh, Swan Street Strategies partner, Aaron McPike. Aaron, what do you make of this? Well, you know, look, I, I, we've been hearing this name for a, a couple of months now, and I, I think it just means that we're getting closer to the money, and obviously what Weisselberg was discussing with Cohen, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to know everything about Donald Trump's finances as he has been worried about. It really just relates to the payments made to these two women. But we're obviously getting closer on what President Trump knew and when he knew it. All right, Lonnie Chen, I apologize starting things off that way. But Lonnie, is it your sense that this investigation is veering off course or going in a different direction uh, that might not even involve uh, issues of collusion or potential collusion, but just uh, financial uh, transactions in some cases that date back years? Yeah, I think the short answer, Neil, is we're not really sure where this is going to go, in part because Mueller has such a broad mandate. I mean, yes, he is there to investigate Russia-related activities, but this is the challenge with a special counsel-type setup, and this is a challenge that I think Democrats and Republicans have both acknowledged as a problem, of course, with different investigations in mind. But the notion that this special counsel has such a broad mandate, it's possible he's looking into financial transactions uh, that may go back years, so long as there is some claimable nexus to the investigation more broadly. So we, we just don't know, is the short answer, Neil. All right. Um, Tom Dupree is joining us now, the former assistant attorney general. And Tom, I'm curious whether, whether there is any connection here with separately the Manhattan DA reportedly considering charges of its own in, against the Trump organization. I just see a lot of legal wagons circling it. There sure are, Neil. I think what makes this particularly complicated is that you have uh, an expanding investigation by Bob Mueller, and now you have other state law enforcement authorities trying to want to get in on the game. I think one thing that makes it a little difficult to assess kind of where this is ultimately going is that, of course, Bob Mueller has not yet shown his cards. We know that he's been talking to a lot of people. We know from today's reporting that he's granted immunity to some very highly placed people within the Trump organization. And so I think all we can do at this point is speculate just who Bob Mueller is talking to, what information he's getting gathering, what other agreements he struck with witnesses who are very close to the president. And at some point, presumably in the not too distant future, he'll start putting his cards on the table. You know, Aaron, you had mentioned these payments uh, to these women uh, that Michael Cohen had them authorized by Donald Trump, had tapes of that effect saying that. And much of the attention in the beginning was, well, it didn't involve campaign funds. So what's the big deal? Now I'm told that, uh, that the, the Federal Election Committee should have been notified about this sort of stuff. Um, that uh, if it, it was consequential to changing or trying to change the outcome of, 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 of the election, it could have been consequential. A lot we don't know. This much we do. All of a sudden, just because they didn't involve campaign funds doesn't mean the president's off the hook. What's the deal with that? Right. Well, and, and look, Cohen spoke to Weiselberg about these payments and, and is on, there's a tape of that conversation, apparently, which is why this is all coming out now. Uh, so uh, if the CFO of the organization is aware of the payments and where they came from, where they were going, and it was happened in 2016, it is the top person in charge of President Trump's finances. Obviously, the president knew about it at some point, as well, we wait a minute, now but, know. But the Trump organization, you raised an interesting point, too, Bill. It was a private organization. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump runs it. But he if the check it. was cut from the Trump organization, does that make a difference versus Donald Trump personally himself? Don't you think it does if it was made in 2016 when he was running for president? I have no idea. I ask you. I ask the questions here, young lady. <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm kidding. But I just, I, that was one thing that struck me. Um, Tom, what, what, what about that? I, I, and then I literally thought of that just now as she was speaking. The idea that a, a Trump organization CFO has now you know, been granted immunity to discuss this, among other things, possibly. Uh, and if a check was written, uh, by Donald Trump or, or from Donald Trump, and it wasn't from uh, Donald Trump's personal funds, but from the Trump organization, does that mix things up or what? Well, it would change the analysis a little bit, Neil. I, I think the question is, is would that be deemed a third-party contribution uh, or a donation effectively to the Trump campaign that was made for purposes of influencing the election? So I think maybe the best way to look at it is to say that the person who actually cut the check or whose funds were used to make this payment, it would change the analysis. It doesn't automatically make the president guilty. It doesn't automatically make the president innocent. But it would mean we would follow a different analysis in trying to figure out whether or not this action complied with the law. You know, Lenny, you know that I uh, 
just look a lot of times at market reaction to news and developments, and it can sometimes be a gauge of, of interest or concern, and not that it's always right. In fact, a lot of times it's very, very wrong. And the fact that the markets had a non-plus reaction to this, they didn't think much of it, they didn't think it was going to move the needle, uh, and it didn't move the needle. Are they just um, missing something here that's important, or how do you look at it? No, Neil, I think uh, your analysis is, is exactly right. If you look at the markets, I think the reaction has a lot more to do with the fact that they don't necessarily see these recent developments as being significant to the broader questions around, for example, who might control Congress. So we talk about all of this noise around the Mueller investigation. I think for most voters, it, it doesn't necessarily affect their calculus fundamentally. And so mm. I think the markets are looking at this and saying, look, what, what are the things that would actually drive a reaction? So if we got into a full-fledged trade war with China, that would shake markets. That would drive voter sentiment. That might drive an impact in the midterm elections. I'm not convinced that given what we know about the Mueller investigation now, there's enough there to move markets or move voters. Now, that could change three or four weeks from now, but as of now, I don't see it. Um, can, go ahead, can I jump in? On that? I, I, think, I think markets and voters are a little bit different here. And, and when you look at poll numbers, for example, it generally takes two weeks for something to show up in poll numbers. And I know Trump's approval numbers have been on the rise, but they do not yet reflect what has happened this week. Those, those numbers won't be clearer until after Labor Day. No, we do right. know that, that Robert Mueller's, his own approval ratings for the investigation have gone up 11 points in the last month or so. But I think we will see some, some different numbers for voters coming forward in the next two weeks. But and poll also numbers on Mueller, you're right there, also include those that say, just wrap it up, just wrap the damn thing up. And, and obviously it's not going to be. With, right. with all the news that has come out this week, this is not ending anytime soon. Yeah. Um, Tom, is that your sense that this is going to drag on a while? Yes. Really? <laughs> in a nutshell, Neil, yes. I mean, look, you look at other special counsel investigations in American history, and by that metric, this is just getting started. I mean, my goodness, Whitewater, uh, Bill Clinton investigation went on around seven years. I ran Contra. Seemed like it went on for about 25 years. I think it was a little less than that. <laughs> but the short of it is, is that these investigations expand far beyond their original mandate. They go on much longer than anyone thought, and it would not surprise me in the least if the Mueller investigation is no different. You know, Lenny, if I could end with you on this thought, the president yesterday was talking talking about, um, you know, they want to impeach me, that, you know, the market would crash. And it would, it, it almost struck me as like a Tony Soprano moment, where he said, you know, it would be a pity if the market tanked with the Democrats going after me. And I don't know whether it was just a reminder or a threat. I thought it was weird, but what did you think? Yeah, I mean, I think it was probably a little bit of both. I think it was an effort to and try and you might be right. The initial bring... reaction might be well, the market. But, but, you know, we've learned in prior experiences it, it, it invariably soars back. Look good. Yeah, and, 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 and there's a certain amount of independence. I mean, the, the, the market, there's a certain amount of independence from. Uh, you know, from the president in the sense that, you know, we saw great markets under Obama, but he was pursuing horrible policies. So, I mean, I think the reality of where we are right now is this. The, the president wants to remind people of the economy because that is a good issue for Republicans. That is an issue that will drive voters and ultimately help them in the midterms. The challenge, though, is that he ends up getting sidetracked. So when he talks about these things, they come out a little bit garbled. So I think you're right. It was an effort to remind people about the economy, but it had a, a mafioso-like quality <laughs> it to did, it. It did. That was my reaction, but I could be wrong. Guys, I want to thank you all very, very much.